Hi, good day everyone. I'm Julia Almeida Vigarido from BSED 2C and I'm here to discuss my part which is the sulfur cycle. So first, what is sulfur? So it is a chemical element that occurs naturally as a pure element in nature and it can be found in soil, plants, water, and also in our foods. Sulfur is an important nutrient for living organisms as it is a component of many amino acids, um, proteins, and also other biochemicals. Meaning, it is an essential element of life that is vital and will be used in the biogeochemical cycle which is the nutrients in the ecosystem from living things and the non-living things. Sulfur is essential not just for us or the humans but also for plants and other microorganisms. So now, what is the sulfur cycle? The sulfur cycle is a biogeochemical cycle in which the sulfur moves between rocks, waterways, and living systems. Sulfur cycle circulates in various forms through nature. Sulfur is found in all living things as part of some amino acids. So the sulfur cycle describes the movement of sulfur through the geosphere and the biosphere. Sulfur is released from rocks through weathering and then consumed by bacteria and the plants. Then it is transmitted up the food chain where it's consumed by plants and animals before being released or as they decompose. Also, this cycle is made up of multiple cycles or uh, multiple systems that work together to allow sulfur to travel through several reservoirs such as the atmosphere and the biosphere. So next is why sulfur cycle is important and the significance and the importance of sulfur cycles. This is sulfur is essential to all living things. It is required for the proper functioning of proteins and enzymes in plants and animals. Sulfur plays a huge role in folding of proteins and it is released in to the atmosphere by the burning of fossil fuels. The sulfur cycle is important because it balances sulfur concentrations in various reservoirs so as the Earth's surface a more suitable site for the living organisms. So because sulfur occurs in nature in combination with other elements such as um, nitrogen, iron, phosphorus, the sulfur cycle has an impact on other elements available. The plants and algae absorb it as sulfate from the soil or the ocean. It is used to create two of the necessary amino acids for protein um, synthesis. So the sulfur is necessary element that is found in protein molecules and acids. Therefore, knowledge of the sulfur cycle facilitates um, knowledge of organisms and their structures. Uh, so far, that's all. Thank you. Wonderful day to everyone. My name is Justin Gentib and I'm from Bisset Tusin. I'm going to explain how sulfur cycle works. So hydrogen sulfide gas is released into the atmosphere by, by volcanic um, eruptions. And also hot springs and anaerobic decay. So what do you mean by anaerobic decay? So anaerobic decay um, occurs when bacteria and fungi break down dead matter without oxygen. Not only volcanoes, hot springs, and anaerobic decay of sulfur-containing biological materials, but it can be found also in swamps, bogs, and tidal flats. So, sulfur um, dioxide gas is released into the 
um, atmosphere by volcanoes as you can see in the picture and also form when the, the methyl sulfide reacts with the oxygen so what do you mean by the methyl sulfide so the methyl sulfide has been um, produced by certain um, marine algae a volatile, comp um, a volatile compound that enters the atmosphere as tiny droplets so now O2 or the sulfur dioxide reacts with the atmospheric oxygen to produce uh, sulfur trioxide as you can see in the picture okay some of the sulfur trioxide reacts with tiny water droplets to form sulfuric acid so now after forming um droplets sulfuric acid the wind now will carry um those droplets and particles of sulfate salts which to fall to or we will fall to the earth in acid deposition okay by adding sulfur compounds to the air the use of fossil fuels increases the rate of acid deposition so when we say acid deposition it is a broad term that includes any form of precipitation with acid components such as sulfuric and nitric acid or, or we can call it an acid grain or acid grain okay so all living organisms as you can see in the picture must have or required sulfur to make proteins like for example plants get um, sulfur by taking up ions of sulfate salts <laughs> from the soil so as you can see in the video, we have animals because not only plants but also animals get sulfur by consuming plants, of course. And all living things releases or release sulfur compounds when they decay or decompose, or in a most or in a much easier term, when they rot or in a block. So the composition releases sulfate salt which can be taken up um, by plants as well as gaseous hydrogen sulfide. Um, some hydrogen sulfide enters the atmosphere but when decay occurs in an oxygen, pre-environment or anaerobic bacteria break down hydrogen sulfide and release sulfur gas. Oxygen sulfur gas oxygen release or requiring bacteria um, can incorporate sulfur into sulfate salts which can be taken up by plants and enter the food chain once again like a cycle that's why it's it, it is sulfur cycle so sulfur cycle includes both gases and also solids um, sulfur is essential as it balances the concentrations of sulfur in different reservoirs so as to make the earth a hospitable place for thriving or living that's all thank you